I probably wouldn't shoot my shot at a girl hunched over like my man's from Notre Dame. Obviously vice versa. We can all agree that bad posture physically is unattractive. But what if I told you functionally, everything you heard about posture may be false. Welcome to No Lab Code Required, where I out-research your doctor to learn answers to your questions. Right, the confusers curious. My name is Johnny, and I'm glad you're here because you need to know this about posture. All right, let's get this recorded before my battery dies. I'm always going on about how phenomenal the body is because it's very calculated, and I promise you, you're not just existing in a random bag of flesh. But when it comes to posture, sometimes we override the calculation that it already made. And that's all right, you know, we get a little arrogant sometimes, that's okay, but let's actually lend an ear to the body and then to the body of research. See what I'm doing here? Asking you if we see what you're doing doesn't make it funny. All right, let's try something right now. Hunch over and relax. Don't over-exaggerate, just do what your body would naturally do. Now do the opposite, sit up, straighten out the spine and look forward. Now, unless you're some kind of mutant that can't feel its muscles, you should be able to feel the difference here. Normally, when we catch ourselves slouching, we wanna correct it. But what if we ask this? What position does my body want to be in right now? Now, I know that's a very weird question, but imagine this, your body's just sitting there, chilling, doing its thing, and you just jolt it up straight. I find that equivalent to the person in class who reminds the teacher about the homework assignment. Instead of just allowing the teacher to continue, you just gotta bring up the homework. Now I know, me Johnny, I'm a little studious, but I never been one of those. Because being hunched over or more slouched looks bad, we think it's bad. And we hear from some health guru or fitness YouTuber that it could be because of a muscle imbalance. And that's not totally too far from what's a possibility. But the problem is, we stop there. Has anyone ever Googled a single research paper on this? We have studies like this one that takes a few hundred people at a certain age, measures their posture and neck pain, follow up with them regularly for a few years, then measure it all again. Interestingly, this one found the opposite of what we believe to be true. That sitting in an upright position is more closely linked to neck pain than being more slouched, particularly in females. They found no association for males. Now we can't jump off the shit with just that. <laughs> Believe me, there's more coming up. I have a lot of interesting stuff to share, but get comfortable, you know, stay a while, leave a like. I promise I'm good company. Mm, I don't know about all that good company talk, dog. Bro, what, what did I do? <laughs> you knew what you did, bro. Bro, what did I do? Since the beginning of time, one of the hardest things to do in the medical community is find the root cause of a certain pain. Pain can be multifactorial, meaning many things can contribute or exacerbate pain. For example, in my high school, if someone did this and you looked at it, then you have relinquished the rights to your neck and they're gonna slap it. The slap will register differently for someone who is always tensed and stressed out versus someone who is more at ease and calm. That is a far left field analogy, but you see where I'm going with this. The duration, level, and intensity of pain is all dependent upon the person. No kidding, I mean, it's to the point where there are studies on a placebo effect of pain and its relief. We can think pain away, meaning pain has to do with mood uh, and what mindset we're in. Pain is elusive, and the notion that any pain in the neck or the back area is from poor posture alone is a bit misplaced. Even the study I just brought up says physiological, hormonal, and psychosocial differences in pain sensitivity or expression could explain why they found females to have more neck pain than males. So we learned that pain is borderline subjective. So it's not necessarily easy or definitive for scientific data. These studies do hold some pretty good merit and can add value to the discussion, but it just isn't black and white. Unfortunately, because I love me some black and white. Now, hear me clear, we are not talking about mechanics. There are 100% put big bread on it without a doubt, guaranteed optimal ways to exercise, lift things up, move mechanically. That's a whole nother conversation within itself. We're talking about static posture. The buzzword of the posture conversation is position. See, posture selection is a lot like breathing. It's largely automatic, but we have the option to control it. Our body just keeps us moving from position to position, and there are a world of things that determine what position our body goes to naturally. For example, the term edge of your seat, that's a position we go to automatically when something is exciting in front of us. Oh, I'm hitting everything. 
Oh my God. Or even when we really just need to focus on something. If you ever look around while taking a test in class, no one is sitting slouched back like this unless they know they're not passing that joint. I felt pain start to erupt in my neck after being hunched over over a two by two inch desk trying to fill out some answer sheet. And that's another very feasible reason why our body automatically changes positions to prevent pain. It'll activate and deactivate certain muscles and this will also promote blood flow. You ever woke up in the morning with the TV static arm because you slept on it for too long? Now, what are you gonna do when you come across someone who swears by a straight posture? You must be upright at all times. This is what you do, pull up this video and scrub to this point right here. Studies like this one says that any slumped or flexed posture is inadequate for the sake of the disc in the spine, back pain, and musculoskeletal disorders. But doesn't give any specificity of when a posture is considered slump. Like there's no angle or degree stated. Like what's the cutoff? When, when, which position here is slump? Like when am I slumped? So it's up to our discernment because pain, musculoskeletal disorders, and disc help are legitimate things of concern. And here's what I want you to take away. I would argue that instead of the position of the spine, we should worry about the health of the spine. Let, let me say that again for the people in the back. I will consider the foundational basic principles of creating a healthy, resilient spine before I stress over if I'm sitting up straight enough. Am I walking enough? Do I regularly slam heavy metal plates against the metal rod to lift up from the ground? you know, uh, deadlifts. Is my spine healthy? Is my spine used to me using it? But Johnny, what do I do when I come across certain sites or channels or videos or anything that's giving me and displaying images of how to correct a certain posture? Rather, it's forward head posture, a pelvic tilt, a more upright posture. These sites and these videos, they have merit and those exercises are legit. This study states changing factors like movement patterns, level of strength and sustained or repeated postures, I'd imagine that includes stretching, are relatively risk-free, cost-effective and show great potential. How about this one? Lab CODIS took high schoolers, measured their cervical angle, which determines forward head posture, put them through exercise and stretch training over 16 weeks, followed up and found that cervical angle increased or improved a couple degrees. While the control group of the study, those who did nothing, did not improve the angle. There is nothing wrong with these sites and these videos that want to help us with our posture. They're coming from a good place. And like I said, the science shows that it is valuable information. Just bring the right viewpoint with you. Keep that thing on you. In reality, it seems that any position sustained over a prolonged period seems to be where the problems occur. Sitting up straight isn't wrong. Slouching isn't wrong. The Fact of the matter is that they are positions. That's it. The body is designed to move. Let it do its thing, you know what I'm saying? For the love of posture, please leave a like. And we can go deeper on this topic, of course, depending on how the tribe, that's that's you, depending on how you respond. I'm gonna get about y'all away. A long time since I've been under something.